we measure horses um, in height by hands. And so you're figuring four inch hands um, is what they base that on. So if you get a horse that is 15 hands, that's 15 times four. So that is a 60 inch horse. And it's going to go up and it's at um, essentially like the back. It's actually at the shoulder. There's a, a spot that you measure too. But um, th that's where you're looking at the height of that horse. So not counting with their head if they had it um, standing in very, um, with very good posture, like up straight. Then we have what we call light horses and draft horses. Light horses are your everyday riding horses. Not to say that you can't ride a draft horse, but a draft horses are, 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 are our working horses. So a light horse is at least 14.2 hands. Below that, it becomes a pony or a miniature, depending on um, what its breakdown. Pony has a little other classification. They are gonna weigh anywhere from 900 to 1400 pounds. And they're what we see everywhere. Like I said, they're the riding horses. So we see those pretty well everywhere. Draft horses are considered our heavy horses. Um, they're like a Clydesdale. They're going to weigh anywhere from 1,399 pounds to 2,000 pounds. They are going to, the average height is 16 to 19 hands. And they're just very heavy. They have very large feet. If you look at the shoe of a draft horse, you're looking at one that's like this big on a lot of our draft horses versus your regular horseshoe, which is more down this size. We also classify horses as cold, warm, and hot-blooded. And that's really their personality type. The horses obviously are mammals, so they have um, hot or they have warm-blooded. However, when we talk about this with their attitudes, cold-blooded, they are calm, cool, collected. A lot of your draft horses, or most all of your draft horses. Now you might have one that's, you know, kind of spernickety and, and kind of uh, um, a problem, but for the most part, they're, you, like I know someone who has Clyde sales and they let their small children climb all over them and they're not worried at all because those horses, they are, are just like that is the personality that's bred into them because if you have them tied up to a, um, or hitched up to um, a plow or to a wagon or something, you don't want them to get startled by something. Think about if you've seen horses on carts or wagons going through a parade or something, those sounds don't normally um, affect them unless it's something very abnormal. Warm means that they've got some spirit to them. They're very lively and that usually equals a lot of speed, which is a good thing. Then we have hot. A thoroughbred, like a racehorse, would be a hot-blooded. They are very spirited. They're very maybe hard, hard to handle because they're high energy and they're going to have extreme speed, which is what you would want whenever they're a racehorse. If you're just getting into it, you probably aren't going to buy a draft horse if you're just wanting a riding horse, but you would want something more in that um, warm range and not a hot range. So let's start looking at the breeds. The first one is the Appaloosa. And Appaloosa is very characterized by the dapple that you see on this picture. It looks like it has white spots all over it um, on top of the color, and it kind of goes back to some white on its hindquarters. Um, it was used by um, Indians here in, in um, well, in Central America, South America, and the U.S., and uh, used as war horses. Um, and they originated from Spanish horses that were left by explorers. So um, Spain would be your origins. And as I mentioned, they have mottled skin with um, black and white kind of modeling. And usually it's kind of a darker brown to black coloring on the, the main body of the, the horse. So some positives, they're, they're fast. Um, that makes them more of a warm to a hot blooded horse. Um, there's not necessarily a major negative unless that is something that is a negative that you don't want. An Arabian. Arabian come from the Bedouin desert, so they're from the Middle East. They are I'm a very, very old breed. They're considered one of the oldest. Um, and they are definitely fast. They're definitely a hot-blooded um, horse. They are, like, speed is great, but they can also be a little bit of a problem to handle if you're not, like, well-trained on them. Um, they have great stamina, so they're good for the long haul. So we're going to look at another one that's super common in the United States, but it's not really good for the long haul. They're for short speed 
Um, so this would be like your cross country runner. Um, and then we're looking at a small muzzle. So their nose and there's something else I'm going to talk about here in just a second with that, that can be a negative if it's bred into it. They have a very hot, high setting tail. So you can see on this horse, it looks like it's sticking up. A lot of horses only, it does it look like that whenever they're going to the bathroom and this one's not. Um, and then it's very short backed, but that adds that speed. It's very small. So depending on like, this is kind of like the sports car versus the like family sedan. Um, some negatives, um, some of it goes with the breeding and that is that short muzzle. They actually, some people breed it to be scoop nosed and that can be problematic. That creates nasal passage issues, so breathing issues which is really silly that you breathe that into them because if they're known for speed and endurance, that's going to stop their airflow or restrict it. That's going to be problematic. Um, sometimes just that their smaller frame is um, like as far as short backed is not great. Um, they do have nice long legs though. So they're going to be on your taller side of horses. Um, and then the other, I guess you could say negative is if you're not an experienced rider and Arabian can um, get you hurt because they are high spirited. Oh, on color, you're kind of seeing they're usually in the grays to blacks to very dark browns. A paint is one that, I mean, this one has quite a bit of color. They're actually different patterns. It could be Obero or Tabiano, and that is how the white and the um, opposing color, how they um, wrap around the animal. But um, they are splotch markings. They're what we call a stock horse, so they're ones that um, they're kind of a standard here in the U.S. Like we don't see as many paints now, but they've been around. Um, Native Americans use them. They are native to the um, to the Americas, so North America and Central America. Um, and as I said, they were well used by the Indians, um, partly because they are pretty calm which is a positive. They are not overly sized. Like you can get one that's bigger if you breed others into it, but they, they really are kind of on that smaller side and they're fairly fast, even though they are very calm. They're very sure footed as well. So the quarter horse, it is the American quarter horse. So it came from right here in the United States. Um, and it is a racehorse. It gets its name for its speed in the quarter mile. So this is good for short hauls. That why that is why we see it used a lot in rodeos for um, barrels and poles and such. Um, it is because it is it has speed. It's great for a cutting horse. Um, those sorts of things. Um, it's not bad for a trail ride either. You're not looking for speed on that, but you know, kind of um, going through. They're very sure footed. Um, the one of the problems is that speed is for that quarter mile they don't necessarily have the endurance. They are really smart and that's why we use them to work with other animals like cutting cattle and things. Saddlebred, they are a jumper horse. Again, in the United States, they are very, um, doesn't really say it on here, but their colors kind of vary. It's usually somewhere in the browns, but they kind of vary depending on what's bred into them. Um, they have, just like the Arabian, a high setting tail. They are what we consider a show horse. So them and the Arabian, I guess one negative is they are not cheap. They are expensive horses. Um, but they are for, they use them a lot in um, hunter jump. So um, like, and hunt uh, seat type classes. So you can see this one's doing um, different, um, lost my train of thought, but like doing jumping classes. Um, these are going to be your high end show horses. Tennessee Walker. So Tennessee Walker, I mean, it kind of tells you where it's originated from Tennessee. Um, they have a very smooth walking gait. So they, it's, this is like the Cadillac, like it rides really smooth whenever they um, are walking and, and that gives you a nice comfortable stance. Um, they also can be show horses. Um, they can usually be a little more expensive because of that unique trait of being just very smooth riding. Like you're not going to feel any jolting as they walk along. And I have that little interesting fact there that traveling preachers used to use them. Of course, that would be like taking that really comfortable car to drive around the United States. Well, here it's to ride around your horse in your region. 
The Missouri Foxtrotter, kind of again, known for where it's come from here. So it's from Missouri and it is known for its trot. So if you've ever ridden a horse and you've been jolted around while it's trotting because trotting is very short steps. And so um, the way they put down their foot and the fact that it's a short step, it's usually kind of jarring. The fox trotter, again, it's very, very smooth. The way they put down their feet is very um, soft. Fox trotters, again, can come in a variety of colors. There's no specific um, color that designates that breed. Thoroughbred, this is our racehorse. And I want you to look at the thoroughbred and then look at the fox trotter. Now I know these pictures are not the same size, but you can see in the difference in body, the length of that body. Thoroughbreds are very long and they are also very tall in, in general. So I put average of 16 hands. Um, so they're on the taller end. I shouldn't say very tall, but on the taller end, but that gives them legs. The reason why their body is so much longer is to be able to reach. So these are very muscular, like heavy muscle, very um, leggy animals because their whole goal is to race and to get to the other end of the track. Well, it's a circle, but to get around the track. Um, they are going to be hot blooded and, uh, horses. They are going to be very hard to handle if you're not around them. They're high spirited. You know, when they hit the gate, you want them to kick in and take off um, like a, a fine race car. Um, so therefore, they're going to be on the pricier end. Even some retired are not cheap. And they can be really relaxed. It's just, you also have to realize they're kind of conditioned for that gate. When they get to the gate, they're gonna be ready to take off. Now they might run their race and then be the most docile, calm animal later. But um, it is one where if you're not prepared for that, that's probably not the horse for you. Percheron is a draft breed. So this is a cold blooded breed. Um, Percherons are going to be, they're on the smaller side of those draft be breeds, but um, they are the oldest of the draft breeds. Um, we're Arabian, we kind of think of as one of the oldest horses, um, though they're not really sure. I'm, I'm gonna guess that it's coming from somewhere like the British Isles. It's where a lot of our um, draft breeds come from, but they are very strong, even though they're on the slighter side. Um, so they're not quite as massive as a Clydesdale would be, but they still are good size. They're great for pulling. Um, Percherons a lot of times are used um, as show animals. So there's actually Percherons that travel the world and they do shows where they show, um, if you Google them, they show all of their fancy work with a um, pulling a cart around and um, they are very very trainable in that to be synchronized and to move as a team. All right, I think that's all the ones I have here. We're gonna get a couple more probably later because I realized that I don't have Clydesdale on here and that's a pretty important one um, because we see those here in the United, or here in Missouri quite a bit, but we'll stop.